I've just come back from Malmo Arena from the press center and I've now seen two full run-throughs of the rehearsals for semi-final one. This evening show is what we what we used to call the jury show. Of course the jury still votes in it but it doesn't count towards the official score unless the televote isn't able to be properly produced. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about the songs that I think are going to be qualifying from this first semi-final. We kick things off with Cypress which is I guess a typical opening number, uh, an up-tempo dance pop song song, girl bop, if you'd like to call it. Uh, it's a performance that's really driven by its choreography. My initial feeling was that it felt quite bare with the visual elements, but I will say that it does get carried by the camera cuts a lot. Like obviously the, the main driving factor is the choreography, but the camera work definitely adds to the energy and it's really mostly about that. In terms of the execution, I feel like the choreography has kind of gotten in the way of this song being performed as best as it can be because Celia clearly has the vocal capacity to put it in jury terms. It just seems that like at the start of the song, she's doing pretty good. And then as it goes on, she becomes a little bit more breathy, which is natural with a highly choreographed routine. Uh, it's not a real make or break factor, but maybe that, that would be something that people notice. The thing that I feel about this song is that it doesn't have a ton of character. And it's, it's a solid pop song, but when we're looking at all of the songs that are competing this year, there are others with much more character, and I think that those are really going to be the ones that are pulling in the votes. So if this makes it through, I would expect it to be at the bottom, but I am feeling like people's attention will be pulled to other songs that are just giving them more creativity. We then move to Serbia, and what I want to say before I talk about the song is that I, I'm really kind of bummed that we've gone back to this way of doing the running order, where we start off with something that's big and explosive and high energy, and then follow it with something that is the complete opposite of that. I really think that it makes the song that goes into the second spot suffer, and, and I am considering this to be a song that is kind of teetering between qualifying and not qualifying. But anyway, let's talk about the song and performance itself. This is one of the performances that does feel quite different using the 360 stage. What we saw in Pesmaza Evrovizio was her surrounded by tons of LED walls and it made it, a, it made it really immersive. This doesn't have that same level of immersion, but it is still beautiful to look at it because obviously they have everyone in the audience with the flashing lights. Uh, it complements everything that's around it and the lighting at least fits the atmosphere of what's actually on the stage. Vocally speaking, in some rehearsals, uh, Teodora was a little bit more flat and pitchy. The one that we saw tonight, I think was probably the best one. And I, I, even though it hasn't always been perfect, I think the emotion is still there and it comes through quite quick, quite effectively. Now, of course, Serbia has all of its neighbors here, all of the neighbors that still remain in Eurovision currently. So we could expect that there would be a, a bit of a buffer to, you know, definitely save them from coming last. Uh, I do feel still like this song is maybe a bit too subtle to qualify, but again, it's it's really kind of in that middle ground area. And when I think about it, I, I'm leaning much more towards a yes than a no. We then move on to Lithuania, which is very well translated from the national selection performance. Visually, it's very similar. It has a lot of the same elements. They've incorporated a few change-ups with the camera angles and the LEDs. Also, I, I think that this one actually benefits quite a lot from the 360 stage. It adds an extra dimension to it. Vocally speaking, Sylvester is good as he's always been. This is a banger that's going to get everybody on their feet. I'm very confident that this has a good chance of qualifying. We then move on to the song that definitely had the biggest reaction from the press center, Ireland. Of course, there's been a lot of curiosity and speculation about how effectively this was going to be performed, especially when we're comparing it to Eurosong, which if you've seen videos that I've done about Eurosong before, you know that I'm not a fan of how they go about their selection. I think it's just not sufficient for what Eurovision is supposed to be. But let me tell you, this is the best entry that we've seen from Ireland in a long time. From an execution point of view, from a creativity point of view, everything is there. The camera work, the blocking, the overall aesthetic, it's all very tightly executed, very impressive, not something I've said about an Irish entry in a long time. This is definitely an entry to be proud of. I still do feel like the nature of the song is, it's clearly divisive, and that might be something that compromises it, but I am 
quite confident. I'm feeling a lot more confident in this song's success than I was before. It really is just a moment. Now this year, for the first time, we're seeing the pre-qualified entries be performed in the semifinal. So we will talk about those. The first one that we see in semifinal one is the United Kingdom. Now Oli Alexander is the biggest artist in this year's edition, and I think that when you have that level of status, you tend to get a lot more criticism than other artists have. And this entry has been criticized for a number of reasons. Uh, one thing that has come up a lot is the in-your-face sexuality. I'll say that personally, it isn't exactly to my taste as far as all the decisions that it makes in terms of making it, you know, very sexual and obviously very homoerotic. But I admire this entry a lot more than other ones that have tried to do that kind of thing. And I'm going to compare it to... Um, Jorge Gonzalez is the uh, slow-mo fuego caliente uh, because that was an entry that I was really critical of this year. And I want to say what this does right and what that entry didn't do right. Caliente was pretty much about Jorge. It came off as a lot more egocentric and almost like indulging in the homoerotic side but not embracing it. Whereas this takes it to a different level. It's not all on Ollie. Ollie sort of plays with the environment around him and the dancers are really kind of feeding into the sexuality a lot more. And and so it's it's just it's it's a much more dynamic way of exploring that rather than like look at my pecs. And so it's like if you take the essence of that and you add it to elements of Troy Sivan's rush uh, without having your dancers look like they're all starving, then that's kind of what you get here. I also have to say that the zero gravity thing that they have going on is very effective. I'm really, really pleased that they were able to do it in such a, uh, such a convincing way. The only thing that I have a problem with is that it's quite obvious that when the camera tilts, it's not a real tilt. It's an in-camera effect where the image is just kind of sliding and it's, it's too abrupt to look natural. And so I feel like if they were able to, you know, play with the speed a little bit, just to make it so that that part would be more convincing. But as far as like having the dancers on the ceiling and on the walls and having Ollie in different spots, it, it's done so, so well. And I'm very impressed by it. Now, going back to the semi-finalists, we follow that with Ukraine, which is truly a beautiful performance. A lot of people have been very curious about this after seeing the photos, some of the most striking images, I have to say, from what we saw from the first rehearsals. I don't really think this one needs to be dissected too much. We have atmosphere, we have very strong performances. I like the fact that the moments that we see Jerry have a different color scheme to the moments that we see Aliona Aliona, and then of course at the end they come together. It's just beautifully executed. We know that Ukraine knows how to stage, so I don't think it should be any surprise that this is an impressive entry, and I do think that it is in contention to win. After that we have Poland, which is an entry that I have some conflicting feelings about, because as a song, it's one that I prefer a lot more to a lot of recent Polish entries. I think it's a really solid pop song and it might not be the most uh, dynamic and, and uh, you know, when we were talking about Cyprus as well and, and thinking about how that song doesn't really have a ton of character, this one I feel has more character for having a bit more of an indie pop sound. It reminds me of music by like Aurora or Ali X. The area of doubt that I have is that when we're looking at this staging, it's a cool theme using like chess pieces and having the dancers also resemble chess pieces as well, but I, I just don't think that it's cohesive with how they've uh, done the movement, how they have her moving from left to right, how sometimes during the chorus uh, you're only seeing the dancers and she's off screen while she goes onto the floor and does this uh, pose with a horse. The other problem with that is that you see it once in one chorus and then you see it again in the next chorus and it's just flip-flopped. So it's not all that interesting. Now the thing about Poland is that Poland tends to qualify with a televote. I can only think of one recent example when they didn't. And let's be real, they've qualified with a lot worse. So I do think that this has a chance. If it were up to me, I think I would leave it out of the final because the execution isn't all the way there. But I also wouldn't necessarily be mad if it did qualify, depending on who misses out. I, 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 I think that the song alone merits a place in the final. We then move on to Croatia, who obviously is a big fan favorite this year. A lot of people are wanting Croatia to win. 
I have to say that having seen it in comparison to some of the other songs, I really don't think that it's at the level of a winning entry, but I think that it will be a moment that people really respond to. And one thing that did catch my attention when we saw this performed in front of an audience is that it seemed like there was real audio coming from the audience doing the, the call and response thing in the chorus, the there's no going back, and then everybody went, whoa. So, you know, clearly getting the crowd going, which is always a benefit. To talk a little bit more about specifics, the outfit is definitely an improvement. I like the fact that it feels a lot more traditional. It doesn't feel like it's sort of this mishmash between traditional and rocker, edgy, whatever the original one was. I do think that one aspect that works against this is that the individual parts of the staging, having him, the dancers, and the band members, they just don't blend together all that well. It's still has a level of energy, so it's entertaining to watch, and I'm still expecting this to do well with the televote, but it, it's not its not cohesive. But one thing that I will say that I did enjoy is that uh, everybody likes that line, meow cat, please meow back, and uh, that moment in particular, they, it's, it, it's a very simple thing, but, but I think that they did it very effectively. After that, we have Iceland. Hera Bjork has obviously been a Eurovision icon for many, many years. This song definitely has its share of fans, although despite that, I think the confidence in its success has always been quite low. It's no surprise that Hera performs it quite well. The visuals of the song, it, it's cohesive, it, it feels complete, it's just not all that impressive, unfortunately, and I actually didn't notice until watching it the second time that the platform that she's standing on actually gets higher. It's a, it's a pedestal, like a hydraulic pedestal that elevates her. I, I, that went completely over my head. One thing that I'm really happy about is that they ditched the pre-recorded shots that they had in the Song of Kepman performance. I, I don't think that those are very easy to blend in with everything else. Uh, so I'm glad that it's all real-time camera shots that we're seeing. Following Iceland, we have another pre-qualified country, Germany. Now, if you've seen any teasers of this song, then you'll know that the staging theme is essentially fire. And it's definitely visually impactful at the very beginning of the song, and even the way that they've kind of synced the fire to move with the song. The problem is that it doesn't develop very much, and so the impact wears off eventually. And the weird thing is that with most performances when they have pyro, you expect the pyro to be at certain high moments in the song, or at least like build up towards the end. And in this case, it's the opposite. It starts with fire, you get a little bit more fire in the middle, and then the fire dies off by the time you get to the most exciting point of the song. But vocally speaking, Isaac is as good as he's always been. His rasp is coming through very strongly. He's really the best part of this performance, I have to say, and I do think that he's going to get some appreciation from the juries. Televote is definitely trickier, especially with a performance that wears a bit thin visually, but what I hope will come true is that Germany won't come last this year, regardless of it, if it's the fact that the jury gets him out of there, even if it's last with the Televote, which I don't think is necessarily deserved, but I, I do think that this is uh, an entry that could bump Germany out of those bottom two spots that we've seen them in for too long. Going back to the semi-finalists, the next one is Slovenia. While I've been here, a lot of people have actually been talking about Slovenia, and it's been in mostly favorable ways. A lot of people say that, oh, this is one of my favorite entries, but there are some concerns about how well it's being executed. Vocally speaking, nothing to worry about. Raven is a very strong vocalist, hitting those high notes really effectively, also doing so very effectively with all the movements that she has to do with her dancers, all of that is very impressive. The area of doubt would be visuals, which I think is kind of hit and miss depending on what elements we're talking about. Obviously, the way that she's dressed is very striking. It, it helps fit the theme of the song. I think that the lighting is quite bright for the kind of drama that the song has. And I think that if you were to look at something like Cypress's lighting, to have something like that that feels very aquatic on this song, I think would work a lot better. For me, it's just a bit too much. As far as qualifying goes, I would like to see this qualify. A part of me feels like it's still missing something, and so I wouldn't be too surprised if it just misses out, but you know, Slovenia has neighbors, it could be enough again like Serbia to act as a bit of a buffer. Also if we're considering the songs that seem to have more potential at winning or getting in the top 5 or top 10, this isn't necessarily one of those songs, so I suppose there's an argument to say that even if it did get into the final, like how far would it get? So uh, this one is definitely on the fence. After that, we have Finland, who is bringing a song that I describe as being like what you would get if you put Ninja Sex Party 
uh, Dance Dance Revolution song and Gunther from You Touch My Tralala all into a blender and out would come this song with its jorts and all. <laughs> Not my thing personally. I understand that this is the kind of entry that a lot of people come to Eurovision for. My biggest gripe with it is that if it's going to be this big silly thing and if they're going to go with this naked gag, then it has to be done correctly and it has never been done correctly. We can always see the pouch somewhere. It's not really convincing. That of course will not matter. I'm pretty sure that people will still vote for this quite a bit. The other thing is that with the individual gags, with the interactions that he has on, on stage, it's mostly the same thing. They've added a few more uh, instances of him being covered, but beyond that, there aren't too many surprises. I will say that when we watch this for the first time in the afternoon, the reaction in the press center specifically with a lot of people who had migrated into the arena was pretty tepid. I, I believe there might have been three people clapping. So I don't know what that means, but you know, it, just think about it. We continue with Moldova. One thing that I have to say about this entry is Natalia can definitely sing. I went to a party that was held by the Ukrainian delegation on Friday and I came in just as she was doing her sound check and man, she just like, her voice carries so much power. It's really impressive. One thing that kind of disappoints me is that we didn't see the original idea in the national selection get carried over, which I, I wouldn't have taken that exact idea and just brought it on the Eurovision stage. But one thing that I really liked was the fact that she had these uh, backing vocalists that mirrored her and it actually looked like live mirrors. I thought that was such an interesting detail. Now that it's a solo performance, I just don't think it has the same level of visual intrigue. The, the graphics are pleasant, but I don't think they're very appealing. And what they have done, at least, when it comes to the visuals, is that she's not surrounded by mic stands, fortunately. She's got her uh, little stand for her violin that she picks up, and she's got a, a headset piece, so there's nothing obstructing her, the sight of her. The other thing that I find is that when we get to the climax of the song, where she's going for those really high notes, it's vocally impressive, but it's just not very impactful. And, and I don't know if that's because the melody is the same, despite it being a higher note, or if it's just that it's is needing a bit more energy, maybe something in the instrumentation to, to give it that boost. It just kind of falls flat at the end. So for all those reasons, I don't think we're gonna be seeing Moldova in the final. I don't think that's much of a surprise to too many people, but I will say that I do actually really enjoy this song. And uh, it, it was a surprise to see something like this from Moldova, especially because they're known for having these, you know, more, the, the entries with more of a meme quality to them. The last of our pre-qualified countries to perform in the first semifinal is Sweden, our host country. Sweden sets a very high bar for themselves when it comes to their performances visually and performance wise. I really don't have too much to say, especially since we're not talking about qualifications. It's the same, but bigger. It has the same energy and it's impressive. Not necessarily the most musically appealing in my opinion, but you know, it's Sweden doing their thing with Norwegians. After the song that appears in slot 12 is Australia. Australia really brings a unique flavor to Eurovision. They, they show that every year and this is no exception. I do think that it is another one of those entries that seems to be on the cusp and it's for a variety of reasons, but I wanna talk about the positives first. Now, when we're talking about the performance, it's strong as ever. We expected the performance to be really strong based on what we saw with Electric Fields way back in 2019 with 2000 and whatever. It's also just a soulful song that carries a lot of meaning. They're clearly thinking about how to convey that meaning visually. I do think that when we're talking about the overall aesthetic, that's where the cohesion kind of struggles a little bit. The ideas are there, but I just think that certain elements are really, really good and then others just don't fit together that well. To me, the, the biggest miss is the integration of the other people on stage. It just feels a bit scattered with how they're positioned. Like they're not really well blocked in my opinion. And it, it does make what already feels like kind of a bare stage feel just a little bit haphazard, which is unfortunate. But I will say that I think that there might be some meme appeal with the didgeridoo player. And I mean that in a positive way. And we could definitely use more 
positive, wholesome memes in our life. So I'd be very curious to see how the audience is going to react to that. We follow that with Portugal, which is a country that knows to wear its heart on its sleeve and just hope for the best. One of the things that I really like about Portugal, how they approach Eurovision, what they're bringing this year is really magical. And I really love that opening moment where it's just her singing a cappella and looking at the camera. What I meant to say to her in the interview was that the feeling that I get in that moment is this like wave of calm and it just feels like the right way to set the scene. Now this performance is mostly carrying over elements from Festival de Cancel. There are some additions to it and I think that one of the things that they were able to improve about it was that with the original performance it did at times feel like the dancers were a bit more of the focus than her and that she was a bit more of an accessory to what they were doing. Now they've re-coordinated everything so that it is the, the, the focus is more on her and it just feels a little bit more together. Another thing that they've done is using the cubes that are above them to amplify those flashes of white, those waves of white light, and it helps it feel a lot bigger because when you think about the space that they occupy on the stage, it's actually quite small and so it really kind of fills out the, the entire stadium. Now, it is possible that the Crazy Party audience will be wanting a Crazy Party song that this song is not. And uh, if that happens and this doesn't qualify, I will be very sad. It definitely deserves it, but um, you know, that's Eurovision sometimes. And finally, we have our closer, Luxembourg, who is making their big 31 year return to Eurovision with a song that is, you know, dynamic. The vocals are there. The lighting is one of the best that we've seen, but there are certain key problems that I find with this performance. The big thing that jumps out is that it uses CGI, which does not look very well done. It looks quite cheap, if I'm being honest. And they've also incorporated overlays, which are, is an element that I think is usually pretty hard to pull off. There are only so many examples of overlays in Eurovision performances that I think actually work. It's just, I'm not, I'm personally not a fan of them and I don't think that they're done well here. The other thing that I think is a, a substantial factor is that Tali, while she's performing it vocally very well, she kind of disappears into all the other elements. Like I, I find my attention is more focused on everything that's happening around her than her herself. And so I, I don't feel like that connection is being made with the audience, unfortunately, despite the fact that, you know, the song I find to be really appealing and I can clearly hear her performing so well. I'm just not you know, looking at her. Of course, this does have the advantage of being a closer and, you know, the qualities that it does have are definitely ones that make it worthy of qualification. So now that we've made it to the end of the show, let's talk about qualifiers. As some of you may know, there is one song from the show that I am omitting from my coverage. And if you want to know why, you can find the link in the description. So because of that, I'm going to be calling nine qualifiers. I'm really not too concerned about getting it perfect. And, you know, no one should be. It's okay to be wrong about these things. Uh, so these are my nine qualifiers. Lithuania, Ukraine, Croatia, Finland, Ireland, Portugal, Luxembourg, Australia, and Serbia, which means that the non-qualifiers would be Slovenia, Cyprus, Moldova, Iceland, and Poland. Now, again, I feel like a lot of these are on the fence and I could definitely see Slovenia getting in and maybe Serbia coming out. I think Cyprus, obviously, you know, it has a certain Eurovision appeal to it, so it could definitely qualify and maybe that would you know, take Luxembourg's spot, for example. Um, beyond that, what we talked about with Poland as well, we know that Poland tends to qualify with the televote, so that can make it in with another entry coming out. Or it could be all same of these nine songs and one of the non-qualifiers I have chosen. Let me know in the comments who you think is going to qualify, what you think about the entries overall, and if you haven't done so already, I would love if you subscribe to the channel so that we can keep talking about Eurovision as it's happening. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.